Yo! What's up, random rockers? <laughs> Sorry, trying to... Let's readjust this. There we go. Sorry. I was trying to come up with a way to get... To... Get in fast. So, it didn't work as well as I thought. But it's fine. I'm putting it in. Do a lot! Do a lot! But anyways... <sighs> I'm trying to figure out the song though that was playing around the beginning while he's going before the before the hospital scene in this movie. Um, more on that, which is the beginning of the movie, so not too big of spoilers necessarily. More on that when we get to it. Um, this movie um, unfortunately bombed at the box office, and so far, as far as a certain particular scene that involves this. It's the a particular certain individual that had some involvement in a certain involving a certain particular scene in this movie um, has the seal of gives gives his own seal of approval of this movie. So that I guess is enough to say he I guess he I don't know if he even knew they were gonna do that or if that was just a surprise from Warner Brothers. But anyways. As far as the flash is concerned, the whole Ezra Miller thing, I know, has been an issue. And, well, it turns out, you know, some people have fucked up ways of dealing with grievances. Especially if they're not only coming off of grieving someone, but also coming off of playing over two different roles that, you know, surprisingly were done extremely well in this movie. Like, too well. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if between this and the grievances of his, of his dad that this is what eventually probably led to Ezra Miller's freaking in, freaking the mass amount of incidents that led to this. Which is why I'm surprised no one thought of that. Or bothered to like put two and two together and talk about it. I might be the only one that's bothering to notice this. So it didn't do it I mean it didn't do anything took me out of the movie or anything, but it just it was something I had to keep in mind about it. Like, this is like, it, to me, it might make sense as to why. Because some of the attitudes he had done of certain things seemed to be acting very much like the 18-year-old Barry role, that Barry Allen role that he was playing in this movie. Um, yeah. So. But um, that aside, I was planning on just looking at this film for what it is. And yeah, he, he did too good a performance. Obviously, everyone knows about Michael Keaton's Batman. Anyone who's seen a trailer knows about the Cara Zarel Supergirl in this movie. I can't name the actress correctly. Um, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, it was, um, uh, it was Sasha, uh, let's see here, um, Ron Levy's thing was Henry Allen in this movie, which he wasn't in the Justice League, and I guess there was some, because this has been, like, delayed for so many years, for seven years, apparently it turned out well enough that D DC had enough faith in this thing, and well, that faith has kind of been misplaced now, given the box office bomb. That's <sighs> because of how problematic Ezra Miller had to be, and I feel like his playing this role and the grievance and him trying to properly grieve his father, he wasn't mentally prepared, and it must have screwed him up. I, that's again, that's my guess. Um, yeah, Sasha Calais. Kale I probably fucked this up. Uh, it's Carzarel. And the return of Michael Shannon as General Zod. Underwhelming. A little undercooked for what he is. Kal-El. There are some people who think that Henry Cavill should have played this part. Which technically the character of Superman has in the comics for Flashpoint. So. But instead this was a better way to try to reintroduce Supergirl I guess. In some instances it's. And it's done well to the point where I I kind of hope that if they do the Supergirl movie that is being planned for this for the DCU they don't 
they they actually keep her in the actress that plays her in this movie. I I would love that. Um, like that that's how impressive I was for her, given what she, little she had to do, and she she was a scene stealer. Um, I, I like Ron Livingston. I liked him ever since. Um, Why am I blanking on the movie? Because it was the movie that started it all for, uh... Swainers. That is. That's right. There it is. Um... Nor, apparently they made Barry part Latina, which I don't, was not... I don't believe was part of, uh, the actual lineage for Barry, but... We'll go with it this time around. Um, since Iris West was a little underwhelming, they didn't really do much with her either. But she didn't do anything to make me stand out or anything. Cause, and plus, I'm used to the Iris West we've been getting from the Flash TV series. At least up until like season four when I couldn't keep up with it. So, And I wish I would have had a chance to see that final season prior to this movie coming out. So, I'm sure a lot of people were, who were Flash fans might have been happier with this movie more than anything, but I feel like that it's, there are so many factors into why this movie bombed, but it, I don't think it has, as, I mean, it's more the fact that it wasn't as, they overshot this movie, this hype, and it, there was never a, a gonna live up to it, and I just, and they wasted more time marketing when they could have used more time to fix certain issues in the CGI department that could have been helpful in this. Even despite this, I still was able to enjoy it. It's still an enjoyable movie. A very enjoyable one. I had a fun time in the theaters with it. So, seeing Michael Keaton back as Batman was nice, amongst some other things. Um, thing I never expected, which was I felt like was played for laughs. We'll get to that when we do. Though I'm told um, about some other things. Um, with that but I was more focused on Barry's situation with how they handled it and it was very had a very back to the future ish element like more so part two with hints of part one uh, kind of kind of a thing um, that's what I got out of it Um, and yeah, but overall, I enjoyed what this movie was. Um, for what it is, um, I, I will say I enjoy. I will say I enjoyed Guardians Three way more. I definitely enjoyed uh, Enter the Spider Verse way more. I, I mean, like across the Spider Verse, way more than this. Um, and plus, you know, things like everything, everywhere, all at once kind of happened. And then I guess I can, I guess I might give this a little more credit than the recent Doctor Strange. Um, I'll give it that, you know, to a degree. Like, it's at least worth checking out and, and giving and getting the theater experience up to a point. Um, if you are curious. And I feel like they actually... I mean, from what I've heard, actually, um, I didn't get a chance to actually see this version of the Justice League. Yes, the Snyder Cut is what I'm referring to. Apparently, they kind of made nods even to that, which was nice, you know? Um, more to what happened within that. So it was making it almost seem more canon with the way this movie was kind of shot and done, I guess. I guess because of that, they, that's why some of the, the reshooting came to be is because they wanted to count it, I guess, just to make certain fans happy for a little bit. You know what I mean? Because this opener was... I mean, I'm going to may as well get to spoilers and talk about this movie in length in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You've been warned. Okay. Oh, and also, before you leave... Um, 
I did say it's um, strong, strong thumbs up to like a light. Keep it real. Um, in case I didn't say that already. So, and now you can leave. Um, you can leave if you haven't seen it. So, uh, we get to like a coffee shop scene. The, the coffee guy's a, a dick. Um, and then he's kind of forced into what we kind of see at the beginning where he's about to leave. And I'm trying to remember the song that they play. I know it was a cult from the cult, but I loved the choice that they did with that. With him just going from point A to the to the hospital. Um, I wish it tell me the soundtrack. Um, it would be nice. Do 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 do. Um, let me see. I'll, I'm gonna have to pause this. Okay, so it's apparently uh, Bad Fun is the song from the cult, and it's from, I kind of figured it was from elect uh, from a, the Electric album. Uh, just was, and it definitely was one of the highlights from that record, if I remember correctly. So it was nice to see that song during that scene. That definitely was like awesome. It was like hell yeah. Um, But now on to spoilers with that, um, in the plot. It's like after helping, I mean, the, he starts with dealing with this, and it's, we, and after, which, I mean, you've seen the fan as a thing, and I loved how they handled it to where they were about to show the title screen, and they stopped, and then the fans thing happened before it was about to leave, which was kind of cool until they got, until he was then about to leave and they actually did the thing again, which was kind of cool, it was kind of funny. Like, this thing is best you to view it as a comedy, you know? More than anything. If you do, do it, I think you'll have a better time. Um, in the, well, at least in the same sense that you do with Back to the Future movies, essentially. Um, to make up for the time stuff being a little silly, but... Anyways... After helping Bruce... Swain and Diana Prince stop a bank robbery from Al Falcon's terrorist group gone wrong and gone wrong, which you know, and then we get this weird scene with the that is one of the CGI problems that most people are saying, and that's him trying to save the, an entire nursery um, of kids. One to the point where having to put one of them in a fucking microwave. Every parent's worst nightmare. Like seriously. I mean, <laughs> it, I can see some people being taken out from it. I wasn't. I, I kind of sort of enjoyed it in a weird, fucked up way. Um, <laughs> uh, but other than that, I mean, and loved how, loved the joke about him, how he, when it comes to his whole metabolism with his powers and stuff, where he has to constantly eat instantly eat in order to make up for his his shortcomings with how fast he goes uh, which they barely touched on in the TV series the recent TV series with Grant Gustin um, but this they definitely trusted up on more he had to go into the stack machine eat as much as he could in speed force mode and then take care of the kids and yet he was just late for his thing again and it's like which I mean before all that it's like but the whole Partial sort of Justice League. Superman is in reference, but of course, the whole Henry Cavill issue was so stupid. Still, um, when they should have at least tried to. And sadly, this movie's—it I, I, still bums me that this movie didn't do well. And to hear that with—I heard something through the Fat Man Beyond from him that we could have gotten a Batman Beyond movie, essentially with Michael Keaton as as the Bruce Wayne for that, which would have been great. And I don't know if we're ever going to get that. But luckily, the director who did this movie is going to go on to do The Brave and the Bold. So they they have confidence in him, clearly. Because he did a good job. I still think, as a directing-wise, he did a good job. Uh, I feel bad for the visual effects people in regards to that baby scene. But anyways, um, Bruce Wayne and Diane Prince stop the bank robbery. He visits his childhood home and remembers his youth with his parents, Nora, and Henry, before Henry's wrongful imprisonment of Nora's murder. 
this emotion is very accidentally uses the speed force to travel back in time in an earlier in the day and informs Bruce about it. Which was a great scene between the two of them. Um, I think Bruce's warnings that time travel can can have un, unintended consequences. Barry goes back to the day of Nora's death and prevents it from happening. Also, seeing the origin of what had happened, the way they handled it, was still quite emotional um, for what it was. I mean, I, I wasn't tearing up because I kind of know it, so it wasn't hitting me as much, but that's why Mary goes back as Barry returns to the present, which what they don't tell you is they does so via just putting a tomato can situation of putting it being inspired by what Iris had told him when visiting their place. Just putting the tomato can also with his weird clean up and not look crazy or whatever. And just shit falls everywhere from where he put shit in the cans. President is knocked out from the speed force by another speedster and ends up in an alternate 2013 where his mother is alive. He finds his past self and realizes he has arrived the day he was origi has originally attained his powers. There's Barry and his younger self go to the central police department where Barry forces 2013 Barry to be st struck by lightning in order to recreate the accident. His powers, both Barrys end up getting struck by the lightning, giving to Team Barry his powers, but causing Barry to lose his own powers in the process. As Barry struggles to train 2013 Barry on how to properly use his powers. The two of them see a broadcast by General Zod, who is preparing to evade her of the Barry's attempt to assemble the but are unsuccessful as is this is in this timeline they are unable to locate Diana, Victor Stone, and Victor Stone has not been in his accident yet, and Arthur Curry was never born. The two travel to Wayne Manor hoping to find Batman, but instead of find an alternate older version of Bruce Wayne playing, played by Michael Keaton. This is where things do still get a little more interesting, but instead fitting, they convince Bruce to help them find Kal-El or Clark, Clark thinking that he's tra he's still alive and around, using a backdoor connection to, Anna, to NASA within the Batcave. Barry and Bruce, which the way they do that with the phasing and stuff was kind of cool. Um, also, the back and forth between to the new versions of Barry is uh, between what an 18-year-old version of Barry Allen would be be without having dealt with the consequences of said murder and all that shit and a, a good life versus a sc very scorned Barry Allen, you know. Barry and Bruce are able to locate a Kryptonian pod that was reportedly discovered in Siberia. While well, they instead find his cousin Kara Zarel. After rescuing Kara from the facility, Barry, uh, which Barry asks Bruce to help get his powers back by recreating the original accident, which was something that was in the Flashpoint comic book. This is whole movie's been based off of. Um, like Barry asks Bruce to help him get his powers back by recreating the accident. And then first. First attempt fails and nearly kills Barry, prompting Kara to fly Barry into the storm. Lightning like second time successfully reviving his powers. Even though I think the way they set this up in the movie, I don't really think it was su truly successful. I think what really happened was was it kind of killed him, but somehow he was sort of revived by the other Barry who had his by this timeline's Barry's who has his powers now, touching him and it leading to him gaining the speed force. I think. But they don't really explain that properly. Um, but that's what it seems like to me, the way it comes off. Enough, personally. Karen and Bruce join the two barriers to fight Zod's forces. Though at first she was reluctant because she has an issue against humanity because it basically tried to experiment and try to basically torture her. And he... That it's, and it's a completely different upbringing in comparison, so it's understandable, And but she notices, but she's still of seldom mind when this happens, no, enough from her teenage years, and enough, enough seldom mind to know when it comes to seeing what Zod and how she behaves, and realizes that humanity needs to understand that not all Kryptonians are like this, and is willing to accept helping them eventually. 
I get if some people feel there needs to be another scene to kind of really truly have a through line, through line to connect it for her to be to join them. But this is a moment that led to her having one of her best moments in the movie. Um, which is shown in the trailer, but once you have context, it's even better. Um, a true emotional moment in this. Zod Kara learns that Zod intercepted the infinite kal escape pod and killed him during a failed attempt to retrieve the crypt. It's needed to terraform Earth into Krypton. It's so it's in Kara. That's where the whole what did you do thing she says from the trailer comes into play and it works. It works and you're kind of with and it's like shit. And obtaining the codex from her blood while Bruce is also killed. And then it happens twice but there's a second time that's more badass because he faces the big brute motherfucker that was from the first from the Man of Steel movies which was great. Though it just slightly doesn't make sense how this kind of happened the way it did because it does make sense how he gets his ass beat a lot because, well, apparently female Kryptonians' biology, they are apparently strong, proving Kryptonians' biology, just like in the Man of Steel movie, are apparently stronger somehow while the while essentially the... No, while the males are more faster, I guess. You'd think it'd be the other way around, like like the normal human physiology, but that's not how it is with Kryptonians for some reason. Which I didn't mind them touching on, which was nice. The two, the two bears travel back through time to save their companions, but are unable to change their fates. Barry realize, the Barry we know that we've been following realizes that will not be able to save them, but 2000 keeps trying, repeatedly traveling back through time, but always fails. It starts to collapse in on itself, eventually, which leads to a bunch of, like, reference CGI. The, the Jay Garrick version played by the Flash from the TV 90s TV series that also wound up playing both the dad and the Jay Garrick from the from the Flash TV from the other alternate universe in the Flash TV series. Uh, that actor was it was in this, which was pretty cool. Um, we get to kind of sort of I know I get it being a sort of a so touchy subject, but the Christopher Reeve and what's her face are in this in this red scene, and the one that stuck out to me the most. Hence why I mentioned Kevin Smith, because he was almost directed this possible movie that could have happened but never did. Superman Lives. Yes, we get to see the Nicol we get to see the Nicolas Cage version taking out a giant ass fucking spider, which was one of the scenes they were working on for this movie, and I think that was something Burton wanted, um, since he was producing this thing. Um, that thing. And everyone knows the, the Death of Superman Lives, the, the documentary that John Schnappett created. And hopefully he's not, he enjoyed, but isn't also rolling in his grave from the way the CG was done here. But it was nice to see, finally see, sort of come to life in the best way you could, given the circumstances of this visual effects. Nick, Nick Cage Superman actually finally on the fucking screen. Oh, let's just... It was just kind of, it was fucking cool. Just, ah, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> just say, Nick, fucking cage. Oh, so good. Not to bury out of the Speed Force Returns and is revealed to be the future of 2013 Barry, who still believes he can save his from Zod and prevent the deaths of Bruce and Kara. He explains the casual loop paradox that led to his own creation, but grows angry with Barry, reveals his own intention to reverse the changes to the timeline by letting Nora die. Enraged, the Dark Speedster attempts to kill Barry, but impales 2013 Barry himself to save Barry and wipes the Dark Speedster from the timeline. In the aftermath, Barry undoes the changes he made to the timeline, which is an emotional scene, seeing him have that moment he has with her um 
Speaking of her, he makes a minor change in the past, creating new evidence in the present day that proves Henry's innocence. Which was the only way they were going to be able to explain how the timeline has changed in this, throughout this, so that it can kind of work in the DCU, I guess. Which, once again, is a result of Barry's timeline change. And we don't see this happen. Apparently, people who've seen it, the early screenings that came out, they cut it and they don't show you. But they did now, and what we got, and some people thought it would be Christian Bale or something, or some, I've heard rumors it would have been Pattinson. But we got in the movie that is seen, seems to be seen everywhere is fucking George Clooney. Which uh, makes more such. I think they would have liked to, uh, personally, I feel like if Kilmer wasn't dead, he'd have been asked to do this, you know? Um, which would have been even cooler, I think. Um, but, you know, since his unfortunate passing, which was handled, which Top Gun Maverick handled pretty well with that, by the way. Um, with that, that whole thing with Iceman. But, um, anyways, this was, and, it, and it's too thin, and then you get this weird screen. And apparently there's supposed to be a cut, credit, end credit scene, but they cut it out. Uh, that involved Aquaman, with, I guess, to promote Aquaman 2. Uh, but they felt it was a spoiler for some reason um, to the movie. So they cut it, I guess. I don't know about it. Um, I don't... So I wouldn't know what it is. Some people do, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this movie and the moments we do get in the movie and the way it and its pacing was kind of real quick. It didn't feel like it was, apparently the movies had a certain long length, but it didn't feel long. It felt kind of, and some moments feel like, it's almost like they're forcing us to say puns about speed in this movie. Saying some things were rushed or, or the pacing was too fast. It's like, it's like, almost like we're eating really like we were saying this, like, oh my God. And then they're trying to make us feel stupid and say that the visual effects being bad was on purpose at certain moments. And it's like, I don't, I don't believe that for a second. I just think they just wasted more time trying to market this thing with the rest of the money instead of using the budget to fix it, which I wish they would have done that and then marketed it with the rest of the money. But because look what happened, it bombed. So I, I guess it didn't matter. So I just, I'm just hopeful for Blue Beetle. I want Blue Beetle to succeed. I hope this isn't a bad sign for that movie. It, it, because the Blue Beetle, at least James Gunn had said it's going to be part of the DCU, his character, which is good. Um, but it's not official, but like in an unofficial way, making probably saying that his character will come back at some point in his DCU will make room for him, which was nice to hear. So, it, so. Like, at least give Blue Beetle a chance if you don't give the Aquaman movie a chance because at this point, the Aquaman movie may as well count as Elseworld or whatever, so. Um, but yeah, oh, like I said, um, strong thumbs up to light, to light, keep it real. Um, uh, Kevin Smith has a somewhat of a seal of approval, which is nice given the scene in it, so. But what did you guys think? So, if he's not upset with this movie, then why should I be? Or why should you be? Hell, tell me in the comments below why you should be. Leave a comment below, let me know. If you like this video, rock that like button with the rest if you must. Hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell to see all the rest of my videos. And it's something to keep up with this channel and whatever I bring about. And as always, guys, keep it random. Keep it real. Keep it rocking. I will see you in the next video. Take care, y'all.